Well, uh, sorted. Yes, Twitch has always been working. That's absolutely right. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Uh, how do I say it? Because my phone is now occupied. So. Right. Is the is this the the older link not working then? Right, okay. So you, you posted the, the new link there, yeah? This is a problem because changing the link all the time is going to create a bit of a trouble for the people. But uh, hopefully, hopefully we should be good. Get some people on. Okay, Salam Alaikum. Still here, Daniel? Yeah? Okay. <laughs> okay, okay. So, um, Bill Parvez was saying that you are live on the Twitch, obviously. And um, so we will, we will continue. YouTube is live as well, now? Okay. How many people are there now? How many, what do you think? How many people are there? MashaAllah, okay, that's good. So we should, we should actually start then. We should, yeah. Okay, let's let's give them let's let's give them a, a minute or so, and so that people because we just posted the link, so all the brothers and sisters uh, that are seeing us live at the moment, we're not just starting the will be a part of it because, again, as technology always gives us a bit of a, a hiccup. Uh, so we've just given a new link. If people would kindly click the link, and I, I would also request brothers and sisters who are on different WhatsApp groups uh, to kindly copy and paste the uh, the new link on the WhatsApp group so that everybody can click the new link because the old link is not going to work now. So if you could just click the new link, you should be able to link in, and we can see that people about 14 or 15 people are already linked up to the new link. So inshallah, it is working at the moment. And we will just give one more minute, five past three, we will inshallah start, um, just to, to that people are uh, you know, able to link in. And we're able to maximize the people who, who have already got the information. So how many do we have now? Brother Salim is asking, where is the new link? <laughs> yeah, the Skype, it's on the Skype, Terbiya chat people. If you go, I think they're not in Skype. This is what happens. See, when they when they leave, if they want to go to the YouTube. Nobody goes back to the Skype chat. That's the trouble. That's the trouble with it. This is, a, this is a, an issue which is going to linger. I think it's going to, we need to fix it. Somehow we either have to ask people, just use the Twitch, forget about YouTube. Um, or um, I don't know because YouTube seems to have the same problem every time. So yeah, should we? Should we? If if, if right, okay.
which is which is quite low, which is quite low. So people are not actually getting there. I can I can only presume that they are trying to link the other one. I think I just I just had a chat with Brother Purvis, and I explained to him that this is what's happened. I think this this we need to find a solution to it because um, it is causing a bit of a bother. Yeah. And because we we give one link to them, then they're clicking that link, they're out of the uh, the Skype chat, and then they're waiting. What's what's happening? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then and then we start the program because there's no harm in having a live, you know, it's just live already. Uh, you could you could be... Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think that's that's the best way to go about it because this way Exactly. Restart, change, yeah, restart, change, and everything. That's right. That's absolutely right. Okay. Right, right, okay. Uh, brother, brother Parvez and Brother Salim and Brother Hafiz, if you're hearing me, uh, please could you post on the Skype Tarbiya chat as well as on the other uh, groups, uh, WhatsApp groups. That this is the new link, and we are live, and we are we have already started, and inshallah people can um, join us, inshallah, and we will we'll start. So if you could just message on the uh, YouTube, if you're on YouTube and you can message that yes you have heard the message, and that you are going to. Okay, inshallah, Aziz, we shouldn't have uh, more problems, hopefully not. MashaAllah, that's excellent. So I think we're, the number of people are growing now, we can see uh, from the list. So inshallah, we will start. A'udhu billahi minash shaitan rajim bismillahi rahmanir rahim Rabbi shrah li sadri wa yasal li amri wa ahlul ugdatan bil lisani yafqahu qawli. Rabbi zidni ilma, Rabbi zidni ilma al-nafiyah fi al-dunya wa al-akhirah. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu, brothers and sisters. Um, as promised, inshallah, we are continuing the tarbiyah programs every Sunday at 3 p.m. UK time, inshallah. And the links have been a bit of a difficulty. But Alhamdulillah, we're trying to sort them. This is why Brother Hamid, who has, mashallah, been a godsend help to us, and he has done a wonderful job. May Allah reward him, inshallah, for that. He has created two platforms, one on Twitch and one on the YouTube. So you can either go to the YouTube link or the Twitch. The advantage of YouTube is that you can send your comments. But if you're not wanting to send your comments, if you just want to be part of the Tarbiya program, you can open Twitch. Twitch will give you the option of um, not now for the app, and you can watch it live over there. That's not a problem. YouTube sometimes has a bit of a problem, but Twitch has been working perfectly okay. So uh, today's session, inshallah, will be, as I had messaged before, on the concept of goodness. What is the concept of goodness that Islam talks about? And what, what are the different views and things? My webcam is not on. No, it is, it is on. It's on for me, okay. Oh, subhanallah, subhanallah, that's amazing. I just turned it off. <laughs> so is, is, is it on now, is it on now, yeah? Alhamdulillah, okay. So again, the, the technology as always, um, it was showing me on, I just switched it on and off and it has come on, so subhanallah. Um, so as I was saying to you, 
the the very concept of what is good is has always been a question of debate and discussion not only just for philosophers and thinkers but for common people as well and you know you you would you would hear this word um, routinely and usually though I'm, I'm a good person I'm a good person I don't I don't have to you know I don't have to believe in anything I don't have to be a Muslim I don't have to be a Christian I don't have to be a, a Jew or a Hindu or a Sikh or or have any religion I'm just, just a good person and that's all I need to be as long as you're a good person you don't need to do anything or, or have a label of any sort so different thoughts different views that people have and they hold that view all along so let's let's try and learn what does the quran say about it what are what are the views of the quran and what does allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us in relation to the definition of good what what does good mean what is goodness and how does it come about so we'll the definition of the the goodness is given in surah baqarah which is the second chapter of the quran the second surah of the quran verse 177 and this verse is actually called the ayah of the bir the ayah of the virtue or goodness what is goodness is well defined and enshrined this verse of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of the quran allah says auz billahi minash shaitan rajim bismillahir rahmanir rahim laysa al birra an tuwallu wujuhakum qibla al mashriq wal maghrib walakin al birra man amana billahi wal yawm al akhir wal malaikati wal kitab wal nabiyyin wa ata al mala ala hubbihi zab al qurba wal yatama wal masakin wa ibn al sabil wa sa'ilin wa fi al riqab wa aqama al salata wa ata al zakata wal mufuna bi ahdihim iza ahadu wa sabirin fi al ba'sa'i wal darra'i wa hin al ba's ulaika alladhina sadaqu wa ulaika hum al muttaqun sadaqallahu alaz so as I said, this is the 177th verse of Surah Baqarah, second chapter of the Quran. And the very start of the verse say, is the death. The verse is known as the verse of Al-Bir, or virtue or goodness. So the goodness and the virtue has been defined by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself in this verse. And Allah has defined the qualities. He has quantified and qualified the qualities of an individual that will make a person good, that will define what is goodness, and that will be the, the definition and the criteria of what is good. So Allah says, لَيْسَ الْبِرَّ أَن تُوَلُّوا وُجُوهَكُمْ قِبَلَ الْمَشْرِكِ وَالْمَغْرِبِ This is the very start of the ayah. The very classical definition and the beginning of the ayah starts by telling people something very, very important superficiality allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the very first part very first section of this virtue of this definition of goodness and virtue describes the superficial appearance is not what defines goodness and it has been described by a phrase which means turning towards east or turning towards west in itself does not qualify as being good or bad. So just because you follow a particular direction or you turn physically, superficially towards a particular direction does not mean that you automatically qualify for goodness. So in other words, if you are followers of somebody without following the message, just for namesake, that, oh, I, I am the person who is linked with East. I am the person I'm linked with West. I'm the person I'm linked with so and so. That in itself does not qualify you to be part of any goodness. So, so superficial appearances, appearances don't matter. If you want to adorn yourself with a certain gamut, with a certain appearance, you may have a long beard, you may have a long thobe, you may have a certain appearance to yourself, which is good, but that in itself does not qualify you to be good. So the appearance is not something that makes you good per se. Following somebody, being attached with somebody, being linked with somebody in itself does not make you good or bad. So this is the first clarification that the very outset, very beginning of this verse very beginning of this ayah, Allah has mentioned that superficiality will not count. Just the appearance will not count. What will count 
is what follows in the verse. What for Allah says, وَلَكِنَّ الْبِرَّ The bir, the goodness, is basically مَنْ آمَنَ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ وَالْمَلَائِكَةِ وَالْكِتَابِ وَالْنَبِي The first and foremost thing which Allah has mentioned will bring goodness or will be described as goodness is faith. And this is very, very interesting. As I said, as I said in the beginning of, of the talk, that a lot of the people in today's world, they just discuss or they think that as long as you are good, whatever that means, as long as you are a good person, you don't need to believe in anything. But here the ayah of the Quran is giving us a very clear description. The very first fundamental thing that will make somebody good, Allah says, is Iman, is faith. Amana billahi wal yawmil akhir. And it's again, the categorization is again important over here. That the fundamental thing that will change a person's attitude, that would make him good, is faith. Faith would be the first and foremost requirement if this person has to take a journey towards good and not only take a journey towards good, but to sustain that journey. Because see, this is, this is where people get you know, mixed up and they get it wrong. Being good at one time, doing something good at another time, opening the door for somebody, helping somebody take their trash out, good. But do you sustain your goodness as an individual? Do you make your personality as overall dominantly good? And how do you make that, number one? And how do you sustain that? That is the greater question. That is what people bypass when they say, I don't need to believe in anything. Well, I just have to be a good person, meaning I can do some superficial acts of goodness and I will automatically be a goodness. Allah says, no, that's not the case. If you really are honest, if you are really honest and not hypocritical about it, you will understand this fact that the first and foremost thing which will not only make you a good person, but sustain that goodness in yourself is your connection with your creator, is your understanding of your relationship with your creator and his creation. Without that understanding, you may do some good acts here and there and every now and then, but number one, you will not be able to maintain that goodness, and number two, you will not be able to sustain it regularly. For that to happen, there has to be a fundamental change in your approach, how you see the world, how you view the world, how you view your creation, how you view your position in the world. What are you here for? That is where Allah says, Amana billahi wal yawmil The fundamental thing that will change the perception and make you and put you on the path of goodness is that you believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you believe in just, you know, just, oh yeah, there is one God and there's going to be a happen akara. Now what, what else is available for me to do? It's not an as and when required. It's not a PR and basis. As and when required, I'm good. As and when required, I'm bad. No. It is a belief, an entrenched, enshrined, deep rooted, deep seated belief that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is my creator. I believe in one and the only one true God creator. And he has a direct relationship with me. And that relationship is the one which tells me what to do, which tells me my boundaries. That's what defines my relationship. And once I get those boundaries, I understand all of them, then I understand that there is going to be a day of judgment, well, yawm al akhir, when I will be accountable for what I do. And this is, this is the crux of goodness. This is the crux that will absolutely change and transform any individual, regardless of where that person was on his path, on his journey, on his road, which direction he had taken, east, west, north, south, good, bad, evil, worse, whatever direction that person was taking. These are fundamental and primary catalysts that will change his direction and help him to become a better person. Real virtue, real goodness, as Allah says, man amana billahi wal yawmil akhir. That this person has identified, this person has identified the fundamental and key to unlocking this, this secret and puzzle of what is goodness. How does goodness come in in an individual? How is it that a person is good or bad? Allah says this is the fundamental, this is your fundamental key. If you want to unlock that secret, 
apply this key of true belief, not just superficial belief. Superficial things have been already in the very first part mentioned. There's no, absolutely no good. I was born a Muslim. Oh, mashallah, I'll go to Jannah. <laughs> no. That's wishful thinking. The Quran says, Tilka amani yuhum. This is their wishful thinking. It doesn't happen like that. You have to have real faith in Allah, real connection with that Creator, and then amana billahi wal yawmil akhir, the day of judgment. The belief in the day of judgment, which will definitely make you think every time you do anything. Every time we do anything, the day of judgment. I have to stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I will be asked, what did you do with your time? What did you do with your energies? What did you do with your youth? When you were capable, when you had the ability and the capability to do things, what did you spend that on? They will be questioned, they will be asked. So when a person has that clear understanding, that's when an individual is able to move forward in life. And that's when that goodness starts sinking in. Yes, this person is now prepared. This heart, this mind, this soul is now prepared. The ground is prepared, it's fertile. Now the goodness can grow. The seed of goodness can be planted well and it can grow and it can really blossom and it can bear the fruits of that. Without that, I just have to be a good person, means nothing. Because there's no definition, no direction. It's aimless wandering. So after this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, this, this faith should have in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in the day of judgment, and also wal malaikati wal kitabi wal nabiyin, and the books and the messengers, which means that there is a connect. It's not just a disconnect. That, okay, I believe in somewhere, something there is God, and then there is another something, the day of judgment. No. There's a direct link between the two things. That this God has always given us the direction. He has sent down messages to us through the messengers, and we believe in those messages, and we believe in those messengers. We identify them, we find them, we search them around, and then we implement those things in our lives. So all those things are all interconnected. You identify your creator, you identify the purpose of your life that on the day of judgment, you will be rewarded and punished according to what we did in this dunya. And the way to find that is to connect through the prophets and the books and the guidance that was sent down to us through them. So this is the first thing. This is the first and fundamental aspect of how do we find goodness? Where do we find goodness? Not in people, not in scholars. Again, this is a very good, important point to highlight over here. It's not mentioning what the people say, what the scholars say, what the people of knowledge say. No. Here, this is a journey which a person has to take towards his creator, towards the message of the creator, and towards the messengers of the creator. Three important things. Creator himself, message sent down by the creator, and the messengers, which means the prophets. And it boils down to the Quran today. Because in today's world, unfortunately, all previous um, books from prophets and their knowledge has been lost in interpretations and interpolations. Whereas the Quran is the only book that has stood the time of test, the test of time, and is there in front of us, and we can we can connect with it. Anybody can open it and see this: is the message of Allah sent to the last messenger prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and it's there. Everything. Is. So that's the first part. Second part is, and this is amazing, after the belief, after the strong belief in God, his messengers and his books, and the day of judgment, Allah says, Generosity. Generosity. And this ayah has two parts to it. The first part is generosity, that a person is the words that are used is beautiful. Allah says that the second quality after this faith, after understanding why we have to have faith, the second quality that a person has to have in order to be good, in order to be classified as good, is that he has to be generous. He cannot be a miser. A miserly person cannot be good. He has to be generous. And he has to be generous despite the love of the mal. And he still gives out his money. He still gives out his wealth despite the love of the wealth because he has made a lot of effort to get that wealth. 
despite that love, there are two meanings, two translations of it. One is for the sake of Allah's love, the person gives this wealth, or despite the love of the wealth, both both are both are right, and both both meanings apply here. That a person, despite being in love with wealth, that he has it is hard earned money, he still is able to spend it and share it with Zawil Qurba, his own family members, his own relatives, and he might not like them, but if they are in need, he helps them out. And Wal Yatama, Yatim and Orphan, they were and they continue to be in the current world the most deprived of all sections of the society, the most vulnerable sections of the society. So what is definition of good? See, you can, you can see the definition of good is forming over here. If you, if you, if you look at um, the, the, the ritualistic approach, the ritualistic approach would be you do your salah, you do your psalm, you do your fasting, you do your zikr, you read Quran, and all those things, which are important. But look at the definition that the Quran is giving of somebody who is good. What is it? And look at the, the chronology that the Quran is talking about. First and foremost, iman, faith. If you're doing your salah but have no understanding of your relationship with your Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you're just going up and down, up and down. There's no relationship, there's no connect there. So unless and until a person understands what is the relationship with my creator? What is the relationship for? What is the purpose? And where do I get that information and knowledge from the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? That's the fundamental thing. And the second immediately after that is you have to be a generous person. You have to be somebody who's always there to support, always there to help other people with your mal, despite the fact that you, you still love your mal, because you have earned, it's hard earned, you've made a lot of efforts to earn it. Despite the love of your mal, you still give in the path of Allah for the sake of Allah, for the love of Allah. Well, masakin and those people who, who have less than what is you know, required. And Wabna Sabir and people who are wayfarers, travelers, who might get stuck somewhere, you help them. Wasa Ilin and somebody who's asking you for help, somebody who is a beggar who's homeless, and Wafir Riqab and those people who, um, you know, uh, those who ask for help. And Riqab means somebody who, whose neck is, you know, caught. And Riqab used to be used for the slaves usually. Uh, but now anybody who is stuck, who has been imprisoned uh, wrongly, who has been captured and you know kept somewhere wrongly, uh, help them, help them out. And this is what remember what, what we're talking about is the Quranic definition of goodness. Somebody who is good, qualities of a person who is good, after proper understanding of faith and relationship with Allah, immediately is that He is helping everybody. He's helping his relatives. He's helping somebody who is a homeless. He's helping somebody who is in need, who is in dire need. He may be, and you know this miskin, the word miskin is somebody who has an income. The person still has an income, but it's not enough. So these are the people and Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in hadith, he mentioned to seek them out specially because they will not ask for help, but their faces will be so depressed, so anxious, and so worried that you pick up that this person is struggling. And you need to help those people, especially without obviously hurting their, their pride. Um, so this person, after understanding his relationship with Allah, is understanding his relationship with the creation of Allah, with other humans. He is looking at hukuk al-ibad. He is looking at people who are vulnerable, orphans, homeless, people who need help and support. And he's coming forward to help them. He's coming forward. This is the second quality in chronological order. Third, Allah says, وَأَقَامَ الصَّلَاةِ وَآتَ الزَّكَاةِ So third and fourth, Salat and Zakat, the Qur'an has always kept together. 32 times in the Qur'an, Allah says, Zakat and Salat, Zakat and Salat. And it's always together. That you establish your Salah. Establishing Salah and offering Salah are slightly different. Offering Salah is you get up, you do your Salah five times and that's it. Establishing Salah means you establish the structure of the Salah in your society. For that, you have to come together as a community. You have to work as a community. You have to form Islamic centers. You have to have a structure in place where five times prayer is performed. You have to pass this message on to the next generation. You have to teach Salah 
to the younger generation or to the generation that is coming up that don't know how to do salah. Establishing and offering is different. Offering means you do it just personally and establishing is when you do it as a community. You establish it as a community. You establish as a structure in your whole community. So once again, you are linking with everybody else. You're not isolating yourself. You're bringing yourself together. You're coming together. And wa'at zakat at zakat Now, just before this sentence of the ayah, Allah said, وَآتَ الْمَالَ عَلَىٰ حُبِّهِ زَبُ الْكُرْمَةِ And now Allah is saying, وَآتَ الزَّكَاةِ So this defines, this makes it clear that generosity in itself is a quality for goodness. Zakat and Salah, they are your obligations. They are your obligations from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you have to be generous over and above your Zakat. Not just Zakat. You give your zakah, alhamdulillah, that's, a, that's an obligation on you. But over and above that, you have an attitude of generosity. You are a generous person throughout the year. You're not just generous in Ramadan as people usually give out their zakat in Ramadan, which has become a tradition. Although you don't have to give your zakat only in Ramadan, but it has become a tradition now and people follow it. But the message here in this ayah of what is goodness is this goodness has to continue throughout the year. It is not just at the time of zakat that you, you're paying your zakat, alhamdulillah, that's an obligation. But you continue that throughout the year. You're generous in so many ways. And generosity does not just mean that you give your money. You can help somebody. Your neighbor is struggling, you, you're helping them out. You're helping them out with anything and everything. As Prophet ﷺ mentioned in the hadith, that even smile is charity. Because in Islam, every good action Everything that helps somebody has been classified as charity, has been classified as giving, as, as, as charity, as a part and parcel of charity. So it's a much wider scope of what is goodness in Islam. And this ayah exemplifies that, that you have to be generous. So first part, first and foremost thing is that you understand your creator. You understand your relationship with your creator. Second is you are a generous person. Generosity is enshrined in you. You are a helping and a caring person. You always help and support people. Two qualities. Third quality is that you do not keep yourself away from your obligations towards Allah, Salah and Zakah. And not only do them yourself individually, but as a community. You establish aqam as-salah wa zakah So you are establishing the Salah in your society, in your community. You're finding avenues to establish that system, establish that structure. And that's what what establishing your Salah is. It's not just offering your Salah. You're establishing Aqama. You're establishing. And then you do Zakah as well as you have to do. Then the, so these are three, four things so far. Number one, you're establishing your relationship with Allah and how to establish that. Number two, you're a generous person. Number three, you establish Salah system of salah in your society and number four you establish zakat in your society that everybody the rich people 2.5 percent of their savings over and above is given to those people who are struggling and can you imagine if in this world all the richest people and all the people who can afford were, were to pay 2.5 just 2.5 percent of their um, wealth of their savings to the whole world we can finish poverty just like that. We can literally, and I'm not just saying it, we can literally finish poverty from the world if everybody was to give 2.5% of their savings. As that. And there will be no poverty. Poverty will be a thing of the past. Nobody will be hungry. Nobody would die because of hunger. Nobody would starve in this world if simple formula of Allah is established in the dunya. This is what Allah is saying. This is goodness. You're talking about goodness. This is what goodness is. لَيْسَ الْبِرَّ أَن تُوَلْ وَلَا كِنَّ الْبِرَّ this is birra. Birra is when you establish Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's deen, when you establish the zakah system, a, a, a real, very brilliant economic system where people have their authority to do what they want to do, but they uplift those people who are struggling, who are at the bottom rungs of the ladder of, of economy. So four qualities so far. Now the fifth quality Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, وَالْمُوفُونَ بِأَحْدِهِمْ إِذَا أَحْدُ they are true to their word. When they make a promise, when they make a promise, they fulfill that promise. This is a quality that defines goodness. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is defining goodness in this ayah as I mentioned. So this is the fifth quality now. Four qualities we already discussed. Fifth quality Allah says, وَالْمُوفُونَ بِأَهْدِهِمْ إِذَا أَحَدُ They fulfill their promises. They don't break their promise. If they make a promise, they are men and women of their word. This is a quality which defines a person's integrity and honor and respect in the society. Is this person able to keep the word? Or is he just, you know, you can't? Because your trust. Your trust among people is earned when you keep your promise. When you do not keep your promise, people can't trust you. Therefore, people will never be able to take you seriously. They will never give you that respect and they will never see goodness in you. And you can see why this is such an important aspect. In fact, there's a hadith of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi mentioned that if a person deliberately breaks a promise, deliberately breaks a promise, knowing that he is going to break that promise, it's a major sin, it's not a minor sin. It will, it will be classified among the major sins, subhanAllah. That's what Allah is mentioning here. وَالْمُوفُونَ بِأَحْدِهِمْ is ahad. That they always do wafa to their ahad. They make a promise, they fulfill. They go to any length to fulfill the promise. It defines you as an individual. It defines you as a person. If you're just there for, you know, uh, you know, coming and going and not really taking care of things, saying, I'll do that, I may, I may not, and I will do that, I will do this, okay, I'll take it up, and then a month later people are saying, brother, did you do that? So, oh, I got involved in this and I got involved in that. That's, that's not the quality. That's not the quality of goodness. Goodness means you say something, you do it. You do it, and you fulfill it, alhamdulillah. Or if you can't do it, you say open the story, can't do it. There's no, there's no harm in that. If you can't do it, you can't do it. But if you say you do it, then do it. Then don't you know, let people down. When you let people down, the goodness leaves you. You're, not, you're no longer in that bracket of goodness. Your, your, your ifa, the ifa of the wafa, of your, of your mufun, your, your ahad, is very, very important. So Alhamdulillah, this is the fifth quality. So five qualities so far of what defines goodness. Sixth quality, wasabirina. And they are the people who have sabr. What is sabr? Sabr again is sometimes misunderstood. People think sabr means, okay, anything that comes your way, you, you just sit down and say, okay, Allah ki marzi. It was Allah's, you know, it was Allah's will. Somebody hit me, Allah's will. Somebody's again going to hit me, Allah's will. No, that's not sabr. Sabr is showing consistency. Sabr is defined by the word sabra, which means a cloud which is static at one place, which doesn't move, despite the winds. And you, you know when the wind blows, it just throws away the, the clouds from one to the other place. But a cloud that is able to be static at one place, despite the winds, that's where sabr comes from. So somebody who is able to be firm, to be able to withstand despite difficulties, that is what they think, what's what sabr is. Sabr doesn't mean that you hit me on one, you know, um, um, so on one side of my face and I put down another cheek and say, okay, hit me on the other side. And that's not sabr. That's not patience. Patience is wasabiruna is defined in this ayah. Wasabiruna fil ba'sa'i wa dharra'i wa al bas. They show patience and steadfastness. They are steadfast, they are firm. They stay firm on what they believe, even when it is extreme adversity. The rhyme, wars, famines, extreme chaotic situations like the pandemic that we are suffering from at the moment. Extreme wars, extreme hunger, extreme famines, and extreme chaos and confusion. But everything is turning upside down. Bas, the raw, hinal bas. They show patience. They do not press the panic button. They are cool and calm. They stay firm. They stay focused on what is important, what is to be done, what should be done, how things should be done. Are you getting the picture now of what is goodness? Who is a good person? This is what the Quran defines as a good person. There is no superficiality in this. There is no appearance. There is no size of your, 
or the length or the breadth of your beard or your hair or your thobe or what you're wearing. There's nothing of that sort defined away. In fact, the first part of I clarified that that's not important. Your appearance is not important. It doesn't count. It doesn't count if it's not having the other qualities. If it is over and above the other qualities, fair enough. But if it's not, if it's just the appearance and none of those other qualities are there, useless, absolute useless. So Allah says, وَالسَّابِرِينَ فِي الْبَأْسَاءِ وَالضَّرَّاءِ وَحِينَ الْبَأْسِ The sixth quality is that this person is really consistent. This person is like a rock, really like a rock. He's like a rock for himself and for everybody else around him. He's able to give them that support. He's able to withstand. He's able to inspire people. Now look at this. Even in this situation, even in this difficulty, we can all come around this person. We can all be inspired by this person and we can all be like him or her who was showing brilliant amount of endurance and, and steadfastness even in this difficulty. So this one has mentioned these three things over here. Sabirin, they are the, the good are those people who show goodness, who show patience in Basai with the Rai Wahin al Bas famines, wars, ravages, confusions, chaos, total destructions, and they're there. They're still there. They don't lose it. They don't lose their composure. They're there, they're firm, and they're able to not only keep themselves fine, they're able to lead other people towards the righteousness, towards the goodness. And then Allah says, these are the people who are really, really sadaqu, truthful. They are the ones who are truthful in what? Truthful in their claim of and they are the ones who are really God-fearing, God-conscious. There you go. This ayah defines you, the goodness, the people who are true in their claim of iman and faith, and the people who are muttaki, those who are God conscious and God fearing. All the three Allah is mentioned in this. These are the one ulaika lazina sadaku, ulaika humul muttakun, walakil nirbirra. So bir, goodness is defined, truthful people are defined, and the muttaki, God fearing people are defined. Six qualities, my brothers and sisters. These are the six qualities which Allah has mentioned that if you have these six qualities, you classify as somebody who is good. Without these six qualities, you may be an alim, you may be a scholar, you may be a professional, you may be a scientist, you may be a beggar, you may be a homeless person. If you have these six qualities, you are a good person. If you do not have these six qualities, or you're lacking in these six qualities, you are lacking in goodness. This is the definition of the Quran. This is the definition and the description that Quran gives us of something that is good. And as I had you know, started my talk today, when people say, oh, I'm a good person. And if you ask them, what does that mean? What does that mean? Can you define? What does that mean? I am a good person. Oh, I don't harm anybody. Mashallah, that's a very good quality to have. You do not harm anybody. What else is there? What else is there? You think you don't harm anybody because you don't go and beat anybody up. But with all the other things, do you have all these qualities? Are you generous enough? Are you really generous that you're supporting and helping all these people around? Do you understand the purpose of your life? Or are you wasting your life in this? Do you understand your relationship with, with your creator? Do you understand that on the day of judgment, you will have to account for what you do? Yeah. Are your decisions based on this understanding? Because that's, this is what will keep you afloat. This is what will keep you on the path of goodness and continue to improve you as an individual because none of us can say that we have, we have achieved this and we're all there no we're all humans we'll make mistakes but this is the criteria and we need to keep looking up to it and keep improving in this direction so these are as i mentioned six fundamental areas relationship with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala understanding our relationship with allah our creator is one he is one and only. He has sent us to this dunya with a purpose. Purpose is the akhirah day of judgment when we will be given either an everlasting reward or an everlasting punishment. And believing and understanding that that message can only come through the prophets. We have the book of Allah, the Quran in front of us. That's the way to connect with that. That's the first part. Second is to be generous, helpful, caring, supportive, 
to our relatives, travelers, homeless people, people who are less fortunate, people who have difficulties in their life, all those included, generous person. Then establishing salah, a system of salah, not only offering salah ourselves, but spreading it, teaching it, giving dawah to other people in relation to that. That's all in part of establishing the salah. And the third is to give zakat, over and above being generous. Apart from being generous overall, still give your zakat. Then mufuna, be a person of your word. Commit to something and feel it in yourself. You'll feel it in yourself that when you commit to something and you fulfill that, there's, there's a massive amount of blessing you can feel in your heart. The goodness you can feel in your heart. And then you, are, you develop patience. Regardless of what's happening in and around you. How difficult the situation is. Because the more adverse, more difficult the situations are, the better you have to get up. The better you have to up your game. You have to up your level of patience and sabr and be strong and firm. Show consistency and firmness. And Allah says, if you do all these six things, you are truthful in your claim of being a Muslim. You are truthful in your claim of being an Iman, having Iman, and you will be classified as muttaqi having taqwa, having God-fearness, having God-consciousness, and deserving of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's reward. So jazakallahu khairan, everyone, inshallah, I know it's been about 45 minutes. I usually try to keep it with 40 to 45 minutes, but alhamdulillah, we had started slightly later, so 45 minutes and 40 minutes should be fine. If there are any questions or comments, inshallah, I will be handed over by the Hamid again, and we will try to, inshallah, answer them. And can I also definitely, you know, mentioned to people that we are trying to sort out all the issues and difficulties that we have. And one thing I really want to highlight is Brother Hamid, Brother Hamid Khan, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala really reward you, brother, because the last time we had so much of difficulties with the Skype, and today, alhamdulillah, for the whole week, he has been sorting it out, he has been getting all the platforms, working tired, you know, really tirelessly, alhamdulillah. So may Allah, please make dua for him. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give him the ajr that he deserves, inshallah, for all this, doing it for fi sabilillah. And inshallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make him a source of goodness for all of us and for his deen, inshallah. So jazakallah khairan, everybody. Unless there is a particular question that Brother Hamid there is up, um, which I... Uh, okay. How many, how many, how many do, how many, how many do we have on the? Okay. Hmm. Okay. MashaAllah, MashaAllah. Okay. This is Alhamdulillah, very, very good number. MashaAllah. Alhamdulillah. So both sides of Twitch, people are using Twitch as well. So Alhamdulillah, that's excellent. Jazakallah khairan for that. So inshallah, as I said, you know, we will we will um, try to give enough notice to people. And uh, Brother Hamid was just mentioning to me that, uh, you know, people are sending their comments on in that they really like the topic and it's much better than the previous occasion. And inshallah, Aziz, we hope that we would be able to get more and more people uh, next time as well for the next session, inshallah. And he says that there is no other questions. There are just comments and praises for everybody who has made this possible. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept these humble efforts from us and inshallah help us to understand the book of Allah, the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and inshallah implement that in our lives. Jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum, everybody. Take care, inshallah. Stay, stay safe, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum.